Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> Love the shirt. Thank you. <laughs> Huge fan of Critical Role, uh, and the show is so good. It is everything I wanted it to be. It's fantastic. Oh, that means so it's much. Thank hear. you. Um, can you talk a little bit about adapting the Briarwood arc into the show? Because it's essentially over 40 hours of gameplay that you've had to adapt into 22-minute episodes. So how, how did you figure out which story beats and character beats were really important to keep? It was, a, it was a lengthy process at the very beginning of pre-production where all, all of us got together with a bunch of the awesome creatives that were helping us helm this project. And we put up the major plot points on whiteboards and uh, basically just all decided together which ones we felt were absolutely necessary to tell this story uh, authentically, which ones we could maybe see fall to the wayside or we could truncate or sneak in as like a little wink and a nod in some places. And... That was that was kind of the very first stage in this whole process was looking at the full scope and going, OK, how can we crush this down and all still feel like it's authentically telling the story we wanted to tell and that we enjoyed telling at the table. So that that's kind of how we did it. It wasn't easy, but at the end of the day, we're all very proud and excited for how it came out. And, uh, you know, for people who might be missing a scene or missing interaction that don't make it to the series, uh, the original stream is just a click away. <laughs> Well, you guys definitely keep the spirit of it. You definitely really captured the story and what I thought was important. So very well done with that. Um, mm -hmm. And Matt, you created so many characters that are a part of this series. What stood out about Silas Briarwood that made you say, I need to voice him? Uh, I mean, as a character that, you know, like we have a role playing game. The players get the spotlight all the time and the NPCs, you know, occasionally pop in. The villains don't get a lot of screen time necessarily in a game because they're off doing villain things yeah. in the animated process. We get to, to show more of the villain side. And uh, of course, you know, I, I can't quite do as good a Delilah Briarwood as uh, other actors would might be able to. <laughs> so Silas was definitely the villain I wanted to, you know, pardon the pun, sink my teeth into. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and yeah, so that 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 was that was an easy choice for me at the outset. It was like this this is the one I want to I want to dive in and, and just it, enjoy the deliciously dark and hungry delivery. And it does so good. <laughs> I remember there was one moment where you're like, I don't know, maybe there's like, I feel like there's another voice actor who could like maybe bring a different, you know, vibrato to it. And all of us were like, no, 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 no. It's you. It's you. That's <laughs> conversation done. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, Ashley, one of my favorite parts of the original stream and the show now is the friendship between Pike and Grog. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about their bond and what we're going to see from the pair in the series? Oh man, I, I, that is, I feel like that was portrayed very well in the series of our friendship throughout, you know, the three years that we streamed prior to, you know, for that whole campaign. Um, and it's a really special friendship. I mean, Travis and I are best buddies and it's so much of also the game that we played and formed our own personal relationship. I mean, he's like my older brother. We just like, he's the best. Um, but I love that we were able to transfer that into the series and they get into a lot of silliness and um, they're just an odd pair and i love that and uh yeah i'm excited for people to see their how their relationship is shown in the series it's adorable it's so good <laughs> miss buddies B buddies <laughs> i love it i love it so much um and marisha i love keyless i love that she has that awkwardness and kind of those insecurities but at her heart she has this kindness that you wouldn't necessarily expect from a D and D character. <laughs> Why do you think that's such an important character for people, especially young women to see on screen? Oh, wow. That is a great question. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I feel like you already kind of hit it on the head a lot, which is like very traditionally and, you know, fantasy trope E is to have this confident, badass, always sure, always making the right decisions type of person. And it's great to have that. But, you know, I, I think I kind of wanted to show that just because you're not fully confident in yourself 
doesn't mean that you can't become confident or be a good leader or still have a very valuable perspective to add to the group, especially if the group tends to be a bunch of kind of, you know, criminal murder hobos for lack of a better term. (laughs) Um, so, you know, I, I, she kind of ended up becoming the moral compass in a lot of ways in the campaign. Um, and bringing that to this, you know, to this platform, I'm hoping that to your point, a lot of young women or just anyone who might be struggling with identity or finding their place in the world can see a little bit of themselves in Keyleth and see that it does not make their opinion or perspective any less valuable. And in fact, you kind of need that to really, you know, round out the group. I love it. Um, well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I love the show. I love the series. I personally started Critical Role in the second campaign before going back to the first campaign. So I love the little Tusk Love Easter egg. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get all the Easter eggs. Yeah. I love it. Um, thank you so much. It's it's so good. I can't wait for more. Oh, thank, thank you so, so much. much. Really good.